Um, now, the next one is um, Al Pickering. I must have a name. Uh, no, they haven't, they haven't redacted that, so oh. just given us. Oh, right, OK, right, right. Mr Pickering. Mr. Pickering. Thank you. Um, I've got a uh, little disc thing here, so I presume it goes in here somewhere. We've had a few problems with the overhead um, mm -hmm. system at the moment. We had our very first... Uh, Distance um, video into the into the council, and as a result, the system no. hasn't quite managed to come back on work. its feet. Oh, well, it's quite of important that you see this. So it, it'll probably it's, uh, work. Hopefully, it's going to work. It might have been me sending a photograph of um, Governor's Bay Wharf. <laughs> no, no, no. I found this beautiful photo of it. Was it you? Why don't why don't why don't I before the, the well, while we're waiting for that? While while we're waiting for that to happen, why don't I forward this gorgeous picture to councillors? That is outrageous. Okay, I'm ready when. Oh, right, sorry. Ready. Sorry. So, um, my name's Luke. Um, I'm here representing myself, and I'm also a co spokesperson for the Christchurch Rural Rate Payers Association, uh, which we have around 2,000 members. So, I'm speaking on two uh, items today. Um, one is a proposal to remove the rural rate differential, and the other one is on rates increases. Up there you'll see a photograph of a mosquito bomber flying underneath the Eiffel Tower in 1944. Um, to be honest, that's where I'd rather be today than here, and I'll talk to you in a minute about why I've got that up there. Yeah, hopefully if I click on the right thing we'll move to an aerial photograph of my property and the environs around it. Tuse is rural, it's always been rural from the European settlement of around 1850. I breed sheep and have other stock on the place. I don't have a footpath, there's no kerb or channelling, there's no bus, no water, no wastewater, no sewage that I get from the Christchurch City Council. And since the earthquakes, the property's gone down 400 millimetres globally and I get considerably more flooding than I had before. So I can empathise with the people that were here before and those in Clockton Basin because quite often I've got six inches of water around my house. In 2005, representing the Christchurch Rural Ratepayers Association and the 2,000 other members, we had this sort of issue before with regard to the rural rate proposal. Then Mr Barnes um, proposed that there should be no differential. The RRA was formed and various properties were assessed by Barnes & Co as rural. The Christchurch City Council formed a criteria which included a definition of a serviced area. And so there was a reasonable criteria formed as to what was rural in the first instance. And uh, my property and all of those in that area there were assessed as rural. Then in 2013 there was a proposal by two people, Messrs Hamilton and Thompson, to rezone my area, not that they bothered to ever talk to me about that. That came up to a hearing of the Christchurch City Council and I opposed that. In that hearing the Christchurch City Council promised that my rates would remain rural and my property use would remain rural. That was also promulgated by the commissioners of that hearing when they made the decision to, to change the zoning. Subsequently, I appealed to the court on this, but Minister Brownlee, using the CER Act, quashed that. Now the Hamilton Thompson firm is in liquidation, and nothing's happened anyway because it was a bloody stupid proposal in the first place. Why would you build houses on a place that's full of liquefaction and has just sunk 400 millimetres? 
But I continue to use my property as rural, and I don't think you should rate it any other way than that. The proposal that your Mr Ballard's put forward is flawed. He had no supporting data. It doesn't have a basis in fact, and nor is it current practice. It bears little relation to the determination in 2005, which was reached after extensive consultation. It's not what was promised to me specifically in 2013 at the hearing and noted by the commissioners. And if staff find it difficult to determine what's rural, then I've proposed a solution which is in front of you um, that's based on current practice. If you did feel like carrying out this proposal, then I'd expect you to fix the flooding issues, repair the bridge, deal with the capital costs of the services that I provide on my property, let's have a footpath and some curb and channelling while we're about it, and a bus, before I start paying. But I'd like to say specifically that I don't actually want any of these things, and that the differential was in recognition of the lack of them. But if there's going to be no differential, then I expect some equity on this. And as you can see, I've got reams of data here that provides the backup that Mr Ballard seems to be lacking. Now, the next thing I've got there is a graph that shows your rates rises for services that I don't get compared to the CPI and the average earnings. Now, for what it's worth, my earnings are in fact a negative scale on that. But anyway, that shows what's happened to my property rates since 2003 when I bought it um, in comparison to these other relatively standard figures that I've sourced from Statistics New Zealand. So this isn't a fudge, this is what I've actually had to pay. And as you can see, it's increasing considerably, in particular over the last year. I paid 50, nearly 15% more rates last year, and you're proposing to add 25 plus 8% on that for this coming year, plus 8 and 8 and 8 and whatever after that. Bearing in mind this is for nothing, pretty much, for me. Now that's not sustainable, it's not fair, and it's not equitable. Those costs there, at the moment, are three times more that than, than a friend of mine's property in town. But he's got water, waste, sewage. He's 1.5 minutes walking distance from a park, which for some bizarre reason seems to have new facilities in it. He's got a footpath, curb channelling, traffic calming. How's that for you? It's not. Now I have to explain to children, because it's one of the things that I do from time to time, the difference between need versus want. Now we don't need cycleways. If you're going to have a cycleway, then I think I want a footpath and curb and channelling and stuff before you do that. We don't need a stadium. We don't need any of these things. They're all wants. And I've sat here for some period of time listening to all these wants that people want to spend money on, which for some reason I'm going to have to fund. They're lumped in the general rate, and I have to pay for them. And note that I don't have a library card, and I don't make use of any council facility. I can't walk one and a half minutes to a council facility. I don't even have a footpath to walk on it. So I think you need to allocate these costs for wants and some needs directly to those that benefit it. And that's real easy to do. If you go into a stadium or something like that, then you pay for it. Don't make me pay for it. So, costs to benefits. Not in the general rate. Get rid of that. And if you've got a money problem, then you simply need to sell some non-core items, such as this social housing and all of these sorts of things that you've got. Get rid of them. Sorry, Councillor Buck, but get rid of them. They're $300 million. What relevance have they got to me? In fact, it's the same relevance that that mosquito picture was that I showed you to start with. None whatsoever to me or my property. The only thing I get from the Christchurch City Council is rubbish and recycling. The green bin is useless on a, on a rural property, in case nobody's figured that. So presently, your rates demands are four times the cost of my car, from which I receive a much greater benefit than I do from the Christchurch City Council. If you go ahead with this proposal, then they'll be five times the cost of my car. It's not fair. 
think that's pretty much what I had to say. To say, plenty of data here if anybody really wants to know. I thought you made some really compelling arguments and I really enjoyed reading the submission. One thing I want to ask you though is, and I'm not being facetious or inflammatory, isn't the city more important than just you? So I hear what you're saying about the importance of your car and the importance of the things that affect you and the things you pay for directly. But what about the health of the city, the children you mentioned before who go to libraries? Where does your line in the sand begin and end when it comes to providing for that? So Councillor Jones, you put me in, a, in an awkward position, to be honest, because it wounds my modesty to reply this way, but when, when the earthquakes happened, I was one of the first people in that, into the city. I was on the CTV building that night. I did the triage assessment of all of the buildings in town on the day following, and I spent six months in the city. And a lot of that was unpaid, and I, I, I don't give a damn about that. I was there helping people. I look after um, some foster children, and I also teach at, um, at some sports facilities and so on. So personally, personally, uh, you know, I believe in community involvement and doing things for people and not just for me. I, I actually don't want to be here because I am feeling a bit like this is all about me and it's not about the community. But it's not as if I don't have a community mind. This is about being fair. And I think it's also important that, that the City Council leads and shows people what being fair is about. Now, it's not fair that I'd be paying four times more than somebody else who gets a whole lot more stuff from the Christchurch City Council. So that's it. Is that your argument, agrees on what's fair and what's not? And how much you pay, etc.? Well, I think it's very simple that if somebody uses something, they pay for it. Okay. And, and it's something that you can do, and it's, it's, it's within your powers within the Rating Act. And, and to an extent, you've made a recognition of that by having the rural rate dif differential, which frankly I don't think is enough, but whatever. And now you're proposing getting rid of that. So I just don't think it's fair, Councillor Jones, I'm sorry. And, and I, I do, I mean, I, I actually feel guilty at, be here, at being here talking about me, but I am talking about 2,000 other people. And Sorry? most of 1,131, and uh, most of them seem to have made a submission. So we've heard a lot about the rural rates differential. It will definitely be something that we have to address in uh, review of the long-term plan. There is more than 1,131 that are affected by these increases, though, Councillor Buck. Oh, okay. The figure we have Sorry. is 1,131. Sorry. So I'm just saying that, that I'm representing around 2,000 people. Okay. Right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, we now have the Human Rights Commission, Richard Tankerson.